After all of the variable and array declarations, any variables and arrays that need values can be set to those values. So this is the fourth change we're making. And for example, you can set delta is equal to 4.3 e to the minus 3, and dt is equal to 0 0.99 times dx over c. Notice that there are no semicolons here at the ends of these lines. So go ahead and take out all of the semicolons at the end of the lines throughout the entire code. For the arrays, we can specify the size of the arrays using allocate. And in parentheses, we can say easy, and we want this to go from 1 to IMAX. And the similarly for HY, we can say from 1 to IMAX minus 1, since there's one less HY. Now this just allocates memory, so we separately need to initialize all the numbers in these arrays to 0. So a little bit later on, we can have EZ, and colon here will just set all the values in that array, set them all at once equal to 0. And the same thing with HY. Notice here that I wrote 0, 0.0 instead of just 0. Fortran is very picky about real numbers versus integers. For example, if you ever write i is equal to 9 divided by 2, and i is declared as an integer, then the code is going to round to the nearest integer. So instead, let's not do that, instead we should have the variable declared as a real number. So earlier in the code we might have real and num, I'll just call it num for number, and then we can write later when we're declaring what num is equal to. We can say num is equal to 9.0 divided by 2.0. So notice I put 2.0 instead of 2 in the denominator, and this is very important. If we write it this way, we have a real number divided by a real number, we'll get a real number, and we can assign that to our real number. So there's consistency here. So if we write it this way, we'll get the correct 4.5 assigned to the variable num. The fifth change we can make to our code is that we need to change the comments. So replace any comments with the percent in front. So change the percent. Instead of percent, we're going to use an exclamation mark. And so this is for the comments in the code. Now we can move into the time stepping loop. The primary change that needs to be made in the time stepping loop is that we need to change how the loops are defined. In MATLAB codes, we use for loops. In your Fortran code, we must use do loops with a comma separating the starting and ending number instead of a colon. So for example, we have do n equals 1 comma 1 to n max, and then where we're going to perform updates to the field components and so forth. And then we're going to end our time stepping loop with end do instead of just end. So go through and make these changes to all the for loops that you have in the code. And then the seventh change, the only other change we need to make in the time stepping loop is to the source function. Right now the source function is ez at i equal 1, and we have an exponential minus n minus n naught divided by n half and to the power of 2. So the compiler is not going to recognize this symbol right here. So we need to change that to Fortran that's going to be 2 stars instead of that symbol. Also, since Fortran is picky about real numbers, we need to convert the integer n time step numbers to real numbers. So here, I would write, instead of just n minus n naught, we want to convert this to a real number. So put real n minus n naught. And then here also, instead of just divide by n half, divide it by all this together, real n half. Otherwise, you're going to get rounding.